We funded the Republican Congress, provided emergency health care funding and vaccination. The Republican Congress provided emergency education for those that are going to be here for four months or six months or eight months. They provided for education services as well. The intent is one that's going to differ every step of the way. The principle, I believe, and you hit the exactly right in your follow-up, is recognizing the difference between those who wish to come here legally and those who originate their travel here with the intent to break the law. Because we're a nation of laws and we have to enforce them. Probably. 
If the Senate were to flip to Republicans, or to keep us academic, the Senate were to stay Democrat, and the House were to flip to Democrats, then you would have legislation move through the Congress and hit the President's desk, and the President would have to own his own legacy, and either sign legislation, veto it, or negotiate it. But either way, he wouldn't have the luxury that he has now, which is Harry Reid runs interference on any bill that the President doesn't want to see on his desk. And the President has the incredible luxury I mean, it's political. It's a luxury to go around the nation beating the bully pulpit about how bad the Congress is. When in fact, he never has to make a decision on anything Congress does unless he chooses to. Thank you all for coming tonight. And thank you for joining me tonight uh, for tonight's nice CTF events, part of this year's Immigration, Identity, and Globalization series, which explores the many questions and dynamics today's immigrant space. Elected to the United States House of Representatives in March, our featured speaker this evening is a man who believes members of Congress should be thoughtful and deliberative in approaching the issues that are most critical to our community and to the nation, and should always seek to work together on critical issues like veterans, health care, job growth, and immigration. A member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and House Veterans Affairs Committee, Congressman David Jolly is a strong advocate for veterans helping to pass an emergency VA bill that was recently signed into law. On the issue of immigration, Congressman Jolly voted this summer in support of a $694 million U.S. border security bill that would provide funds to address the influx of children at the U.S.-Mexico border. The legislation included a limited and narrowly targeted package of solutions that focuses on law enforcement, border security, and the safe, timely, and responsible return of individuals to their country of origin. A resident of Indian Shores and representing Florida's 13th Congressional Districts in Pinellas County, please join me in welcoming Congressman David Jolly. Well, thank you very much. I always say this when there's a very thorough introduction and I've got nothing to say. So, <laughs> uh, let me tell you the other philosophy I have. It's always more important to engage in Q&A than it is for me just to give prepared remarks because then we get to talk about what you want to talk about. And if we only talk about what I wanted to talk about, you'd let me off too easy and I'd sneak out the back door. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a few thoughts that I have on, on the issue of immigration. And I will tell you from the beginning, I think immigration also needs to include the term border security uh, because the two go hand in hand. And we can have a responsible and civil conversation about how the two go hand in hand, and that's what I hope we do tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my philosophy, my background, and then we can uh, have some Q and A. You know, I, I learned of some of the other speakers in the series, and all of them with with very rich experiences, credible experiences, great speakers. And I said, wait, am I the only counterpoint in this entire series? Uh, and we'll see about that as we work through it tonight. But here's, here's a couple things I want you to know. Uh, the, the introduction included the notion that I think members of Congress should be thoughtful and deliberate. And that's true. Because I will tell you that nothing will get done if members of Congress on both sides of the aisle are not thoughtful and deliberate and find a way to work together. I want to share a little bit of a humorous story with you uh, to, to set out. It's not actually about immigration, but if you stick with me, you'll see how it actually becomes about representing our interest in immigration as a country. So it's been six months for me to have the opportunity to serve Pinellas County in the United States Congress. And for those of you who, as I say, went through the tragedy of our special election with $14 million of negative advertising and all the toxicity, uh, the truth is, since being elected on March 11th, it has involved some really neat experiences. It's an honor. It's a, it's a privilege. It's something I take very seriously every day. Now, some of the experiences are people saying, hey, well done, thank you for doing that. Those are kind of nice experiences. Some are people saying, you're awful, you're terrible, I disagree with you entirely, and they punch you in the gut every chance they get. Those aren't as exciting as experiences. Those are a little more challenging. And some are just fun. So I want to share a fun one with you. Uh, I was in D.C. about a week or two ago for the hearing on the Marine who's currently jailed in Mexico. And it was kind of a slow day because we weren't in session. I think we should have been. So there were only a few members there. And I'm in my office, and I hear this nine-year-old boy walk in, and he, say, he comes in and he says, my name's Blake, 
And I wrote the congressman, and he promised he would give me a tour of the Capitol. And he had all of the cautiousness and the, and the confidence of a nine-year-old student who was ready to learn about Washington. And so I stepped out there, and he was with his mom and his grandmother, and he was on a homeschool educational trip. And so he said, my name's Blake. I wrote you a letter, and I wanted to get a tour of the Capitol. My mom made me write it myself, because I'm supposed to learn what it's like to be a member of Congress, and so I have to take history very seriously. I said, okay, Blake, but before the tour, if you really want to learn what it's like to be a member of Congress, and what I want you to do is turn the corner and go into my office and sit behind my desk, and then you can begin to learn what it's like to be a member of Congress. So he turned the corner, and he marched into my office, and he looked up at me and he said, wow, your room's as messy as mine is. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with immigration? Here's why. We can have this academic conversation all night. I, I have occasionally given uh, academic uh, sessions at, at, in colleges about what is the role of a representative. Is the role of a representative to run on a platform where you express your convictions, and by whatever margin you're elected, that you you honor absolutely every one of those convictions, regardless of what public opinion is. Or is the role of a representative to reflect what is most important in the community that you're elected to represent? And academically recognize the tension between those two philosophies behind representation. So what was most important to Blake was that he got a tour of the Capitol. That's it. What was most important to his parents was that he learned something while he was there. And so as the elected representative of Blake and his parents, I wanted to honor what was most important to Blake and his mom and to his grandmother that day. Now, what is most important to some people in the country right now is the status of 11 million people that are here without documentation or with a status that qualifies them as being undocumented the most important thing to a lot of people in the country. What is most important to other people is border security and is stopping the inflow of those who are undocumented. So as an elected official, as a member of Congress, what is the appropriate goal? How do you balance that? So college campuses, there, there are moments in history replete with, with public policy developments that originated on college campuses. And in some areas, it was referred to as radical. You know, radical convictions of college students that changed the course of the country. Well, I believe in a radical notion myself. And that radical notion is that Congress should work. <laughs> I believe Congress should work. I believe Congress should govern. I believe if we are not in session, if we are not working, that we will never address the issues that are most important to the country. What does that mean? I think the greatest threat to our national security is a long-term budget forecast that is so imbalanced and is going to drive our nation off the fiscal cliff and ensure that we are no longer the world's lone superpower. I think that's an issue we need to address and we need to stay in session until we address it. I think we need to stay in session and address are we at war right now in the Middle East? We should be debating whether or not Congress should provide an authorization to use military force for the President's current engagement in Syria. We just had a dramatic change in our position in Syria, one from where we were looking to topple Assad and now we're hoping for his cooperation. And what happens if Assad changes his mind tomorrow? Bottom line is the American people deserve to have their voices represented in the United States Congress. That includes the issue of immigration. Now, I want to tell you that puts me in a minority with some in my own conference who would prefer we don't bring it up. But I'm going to share with you tonight, frankly, from a conservative standpoint, why I think we should bring it up. And I'm going to tell you what I think the outcome would likely be. Uh, and then we can engage in some, some Q&A. I mentioned at the beginning that any talk on immigration needs to also include conversation about border security. We have devolved the political conversation on so many issues in modern America to you're either in one camp or the other. Of what our government and politics is right now, what direction it's headed. 
<laughs> I know that's a big question. No, 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 no. Listen, I, you know, when I said at the beginning that I believe Congress should work, I actually believe in something else more fundamental. I believe in the institution. I really do. I believe in the institution of the Congress to be good and to do right. And frankly, that means at times also trusting courts to get right decisions. Look, you can look at Plessy and Dred Scott and other decisions and recognize that the same court we bashed for some activist decisions. Frankly, it was their activism that overcame basic civil rights for every individual, but Congress failed. But we also have to recognize that Congress sometimes can do some good things as well. But to do so, we have to work. So, listen, one of the things I've suggested, and this, is, this sounds silly, it really sounds silly, the power of common sense sometimes can be humorous. I think Congress should go in session Monday morning at 8 o'clock and leave Friday at 6 p.m. Okay? Why? First, because there's a lot of work to do on behalf of the community. This is a team job. I recognize that I was elected and my name's on the ballot, but guess what? If I'm not working together with our entire community on competing priorities, then I don't belong there, and tomorrow you're going to send somebody else there. So one, we need to work on the issues that the American people have decided are priorities. But secondly, the reason I think we should be in session more is because Republicans and those who originate their travel here with the intent to break the law. Because we're a nation of laws, and we have to enforce it. recognizing the difference between those who wish to come here legally 